and okay it seems to work just the uh, window vanished somehow but i don't need it uh, so hello everyone and uh, first of all big thanks to all the organizers to provide us with this opportunity to present you some of the features and concepts of our scientific javafx real-time charting library we both work for the facility for antiproton and ion research fair which is one of the largest international accelerator laboratories that builds upon the existing gsi facility and extends its capabilities our core business is to provide particle beams of high intensities very rare forms of matter and even antimatter that in turn are used by our experiments to advance biomedical fundamental science and fundamental sciences. FAIR recreates uh, what we call the universe in the laboratory, so not the actual, but conditions like that, through a cascade of more than 11 particle accelerators, each of which consists of a large number of magnets, accelerating RF cavities and other devices required to create, shape and accelerate these beams. Our experiments have very demanding beam property constraints, and this is the reason why we need a very powerful charting library to study them. Okay, let's have a look at the schematic view of our control system environment. While the beam passes through our accelerators millions of times and nearly at the speed of light, their properties unavoidably drift. Therefore, we need to deploy a large number of measurement and control devices to stabilize the beams and these systems produce huge amounts of data which is then aggregated processed and fed back through a large number of microservices implementing the feedback control most of these feedback loops are semi or fully automated but nonetheless we need to continuously monitoring monitor or fine-tune them by exp using experts sitting in our control room for this, they have typically two kinds of applications. First of all, like the one shown on the left, uh, static displays, which are commonly shown on wall-mounted fixed displays or on the web. And secondly, we have interactive control applications that are used to diagnose rare or unforeseen issues that cannot be automatically mitigated. So we have data rates from a few kilo up to a few giga samples per second. And a lot of chart of X features are about implementing functionalities that are common in high end measurement and diagnostic instruments like oscilloscopes or spectrum analysis. Yeah, um, hello. I used to work from the early 2000s till 2015 for CERN and then moved to FAIR. And in the early 2000s, when, as uh, Hendrik said, like Daddy did uh, accelerator science. We adopted Java Swing for our top level applications, primarily to consolidate and to improve our platform independence, but also to lower the bar for new and particularly non-computer science engineers. And uh, if you come from a motive background, everybody's of course thrilled by Java Swing's cool look and feel, which provided sort of a refreshing oasis for our new top level application development. And uh, in that time, we developed the JData Viewer, which was developed originally in-house essentially because there was no suitable open source charting library available at that time. And because also we subsequently added or improved components based upon specific actual needs of our facility and or use cases to get basically our job done. And with Swing, we live basically in a world of bliss and our Java based little accelerator ecosystem grew and flourished. flourished. Later on, the JData viewer was eventually also adopted by other laboratories, notably GSI and FAIR and became the backbone of many top level measurement and control applications, as you can see here, for example, on the slide. However, things in the UI world around us changed. The Java Swing ecosystem around us that supported us for so many years stopped innovating and improving, and many developers moved to greener pastures until also Oracle decided basically to formally reduce their commitment to Java Swing. And uh, we needed to look for a new solution and for us at a reasonable pace um, having failed with a hybrid solution, uh, we soon realized that we probably need to stick a more clean JavaFX only chart implementation, and that and thus initially ported our existing benchmarks and use cases to JavaFX, 
one of uh, which you can see here on the top of the slide. Uh, the native chart implementation provided pretty results, but was certainly not designed for our demanding use case, was very slow and required about an order of magnitude more CPU resources than our existing swing-based implementation. Worse, <laughs> due to the original design decisions, it turned out to be practically impossible to easily extend or improve upon the JavaFX chart factory standard without rewriting large parts of from scratch and having faith that in turn these large unconventional changes might be merged by the JavaFX custodians faithfully within for us a meaningful time frame. We thus evaluated also other two uh, UI toolkit options and uh, eventually decided to start a fresh development based on JavaFX canvas and graphics context as a backing primitive. And um, however, we of course based this development on our experience in revitalizing the time proven JData viewer concepts and also, of course, uh, adopting more Java and uh, JavaFX API standards wherever possible. Still, um, while we made improve, large improvements, you can still see that there is a fact of two uh, performance lag between with respect to our old swing implementation and an order. Uh, of magnitude to other competing uh, UI li libraries, which we, we hope to address and to, to, to close the gap. At this point, we might step back and ask ourselves if these performance concerns are really that big an issue, because even on a full HD screen, we can only show less than a thousand points per plot. So we could just throw away a lot of our data before visualization, and of course, this is uh, what happened under the hood in JavaFX. Uh, now we cannot hear you anymore. No, muted. Muted. Ah. Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but if we have the charting library perform this task, takes a big burden from the app, our application developers and also enables uh, some of ChartFX more powerful features like the zooming features uh, that you can see in, this vid in the video, uh, correct treatments of uncertainties, errors and outliers, as well as post-processing and performing interactive measurements on the data. As an example, here we have some seemingly random data with a single outlier, but if we perform a fast Fourier transform, we can see that there's a frequency peak. Uh, if we then use the measurement tool to, to determine the exact frequency, we can often guess what the source of the signal is. And zooming in, we can then actually see that this is actually two distinct frequencies, which would in our case also show tell us something about what's happening in our physical machine. So these interactive oscilloscope-like features can be a very powerful tool for diagnostics on our machines. In this plugin, there are a lot of different mathematical operations and measurement tools available. And uh, these results can also be popped out to separate windows and we can uh, do, uh, can plot the results of, the, of these measurements over time for changing data. So let's look at some practical examples. This is an in-house expert application built with ChartFX, which monitors broadband radio frequency beam signals. It performs some advanced peak detection and fitting of parameter values that are then compared to their given references and used to monitor and if necessary, correct parameter drifts. This is another in-house application for an ionization profile monitor by our own Timo Milosic, who together with Harald Breuning are key drivers of our beam diagnostic integration efforts and also core contributors to ChartFX. This, the heat map charts here show the sliced horizontal and vertical beam profiles as a function of time. And based upon these profiles, other beam characteristics can be de derived and used to optimize the efficiency of our Excel accelerators. This example is a very high-end example of what's uh, showing what's possible with JavaFX and our charting library. It's contributed by Florian Enner from Hebi Robotics, who is also here, and his company provides modular hardware so and software tools for robotic platforms used by universities, researchers, and the industry alike to create custom and world-class robots quickly and easily, and it shows some of the sensor and actuator monitoring and control tool functionalities. 
Yes, uh, talking a bit about the architecture, ChartFX follows a model view controller architecture that is explicitly kept modular, unopinionated, and we try to keep it as open as possible so that the library users can uh, easily add or modify functionalities to their specific needs. Um, the actual drawing is backed by JavaFX Canvas and Graphics Context Primitives, and the library provides default implementations for the view, controller, and dataset interfaces, as well as some math functionalities to support and aid users either in their own modeling or own signal processing cascade design. The uh, chart class serves uh, as the top level control, which can have any amount of access, different renderers, and the attached data sets and plugins that allow in turn interactions like the zooming, tooltip, or the measurement features uh, shown in the previous slides. The data set itself is an interface only. Um, so the users do not have uh, to copy the data into our data structures, but they can choose this interface to wrap it around their own in many cases, uh, database specific domain objects, which minimizes copying and also improves the speed. The dataset provides a custom event listener framework and a locking API, which also, also allows the model to use multi threading without having to worry about synchronizing with the JavaFX application thread. Um, here are some examples for the different renders available and styles that you can, can achieve. Please have a look at the site. There are many, 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 many more examples. The error data set renderer shown top left is the default and provides a lot of choices for representing data, the error bars and error surfaces. And this is also the renderer that is specifically tuned and uh, for high performances or very large or updating data sets. And there we can achieve a million data points with, uh, with an update rate of 25 Hertz. In addition, there are also many other specialized 1D and 2D histogram renderers. You can see a contour chart renderer that can also draw heat maps if you like, bubble or scatter chart, mountain ranges on the top right, and a real-time water, uh, uh, water uh, fall plot. In this case, it doesn't show uh, whale songs, but a song from a very prominent Austrian. Um, any data set projection can easily be extended by custom render implementations and um, and there has been some recently some some very uh, increasing and very special interest and contribution from the financial community, which led to this very nice custom candlestick and high low renderer, which are user contributed, and which are currently being merged or actually they have been merged now this uh, yesterday into ChartFX. And uh, I'm quite, actually quite happy. Uh, we initially developed this library for our own facility purposes and open sourced this to be also used by other partnering accelerator lab laboratories. But we found that this uh, that the community is much bigger than our accelerator lab, and uh, our library found also good use by many other external users that have either a robotics, biolog biology, biomedical, or financial, or just a general academic background. Okay, we also wanted to offer a small peek into some of ChartFX internals, some of which have also been merged back into other repositories. Uh, one example is the stylable CSS property factory, which allowed us to uh, define CSS modifiable properties much more concisely and reduce the lines of code of our stylable classes by a factor of two and simplified testing, maintenance, and refactoring. Another one is uh, the event source and event cascade extension in our dataset module, which complements the JavaFX event listener system and is used by the dataset API so to do extensive computations on the datasets uh, to, uh, in a safe and concurrent way. Uh, for those interested beyond the simple visualization features, ChartFX also includes some optional middleware and serializer functionalities, which simplifies moving datasets from and other domain objects between middle tier services and UI applications. We hope that we raised your appetite a bit for our ChartFX library with this talk, and uh, you can find the source code documentation and issue tracker on GitHub. It's free open source, extensively tested and monitored by some, a set of static analysis tools. If it's something for you, please feel invited to use, improve or participate. Uh, and we'd like to thank, thank all the people who contributed with advice, code, or bug reports in the past, the present, and hopefully in the long future of ChartFX and JavaFX. Thanks. Thank you.
Okay, um, so we have some questions coming from the audience. Um, since we're yeah not based on you, but uh, in general over time, I won't ask all of them. Um, but so one question, the first one was, do you use um, Java for other things than this chart? So do you use Java for, for example, for dangerous monitoring system? Dangerous, in, I think it's here about the things that you are doing <laughs> look dangerous to everyone without you, so. <laughs> First of all, you're safe, don't worry. Okay, we, that sounds good, that sounds we, good. We have, we have top men working on it. <laughs> Do you use no. JavaFX to create a black hole? Yeah, <laughs> or Java. Java, oh, yeah, sorry, Java. Um, well, we have um, quite diverse control systems environment. We have basically following a three-tier approach. So we have very low-level front-end controls that directly speak to the hardware. Um, that tier is completely dominated by firmwares, VHDL, and, and C++. And then on the middle tier, we have a mixture of, um, of Java and C++. Some of the, let's say, settings supply, so uh, database management and where we keep our magnet settings and how we want to operate uh, the facility and management is done in Java. And uh, some parts are in C++ when, especially when it's timing critical, when we have real time requirements of, of the order of few milliseconds. But uh, on the top, we're actually quite flexible. We have, um, yeah, we, we use Java because it's an easy to learn language. And also, um, I mean, for the people who remember this uh, web browser and operating system wars of the late 90s and 2000s, um, there was a big fight not just whether the UI choice was very linked, very much linked to which OS you use, whether you use iOS, or whether you use Mac, whether you use Unix, whether you use Linux, whether you use Windows. And for us, Java and uh, Swing, and now an extension also JavaFX, solved a big problem. This, uh, basically, this platform independence uh, solved a big divide that we had could focus more of our development resources on one language and not diversifying too much on different UI toolkits and, and languages. And, um, but, but still, because we have a gradient from, basically we have half, half of our facilities run by Java and the other half by basically C++ and, and firmwares. Okay, great. So we need to stop here, um, but I corrected the questions. I will just send you uh, all questions into the chat and then you can answer them in the chat. Is that fine for you? Fine. Perfect.